Good morning, Caroline. Good morning, Kathy. How are you guys? Everybody doing well? Everybody managing the day okay? Oh, so I've been at it for a long time this morning. Uh, good morning, Tim. And so it's nice to see you, Caroline. I'm glad you're having an okay day. So guys, I ha if some of, some of you may know that I have started organizing Zoom wine tasting classes, wine and food classes, and tonight and Sunday are the first two. So I have been up and prepping for the last hour or so this morning, or actually what time I started, about 10. So let me show you what I've done so far. So, or maybe I should tell you what we're doing tonight. So we're gonna make pizzas alongside of Babylon Storin wines. Babylon Storin is my day job. It's an amazing destination, winery, farm, farm to table, just an extraordinary spot in the most Edenic place on the planet. I just, I love South Africa. Um, and so in a nod to the fact that on the days that they give everybody who work in the restaurants a day off, then they keep the bakery open so that the people who are staying on the farm, the guests, then have pizza night. Um, so that's kind of why I decided to do this. And since Babylon Storin is completely about the farm to, t uh, farm to table bounty, literally the chef and her team go out twice a day, every day, and harvest what is fresh and then go back and see what they've got and then they design the menu for that lunch or that dinner. It's absolutely extraordinary. So let me show you what I've done so far. <clears throat> have I turned the oven on? I have not, let's get that going. So I got up and I got three peppers roasted, fired on top of the stove. I'm gonna put them inside the oven so that they get completely smushed down and, and are completely soft. And then I'm going to cut them into strips and preserve them with a little garlic in olive oil. So there, that's ready to go. That's part of my Italian sausage and roasted pepper pizza. That's gonna be one of the pizzas we do. Then, um, let's see, and when we do the roasted garlic, hang on, let me run and get my notes. That would have been such a smart thing for me to do at the beginning, wouldn't it? Hello, here we go. So I'm kind of starting at the back because I need for some of these things to get into the oven so that I can start working on some other things. So I have here for the third course, the third, the last of the pizzas, which will be paired with the red wine, which is a blend of Syrah, which grows perfectly in South Africa because it is an absolutely Mediterranean climate. So anything that you get in the, in the Mediterranean coast, you're gonna see grows beautifully in South Africa. So um, we're doing this. Um, I'm doing first the first the, the the Syrah course, which is Syrah and Bordeaux grapes blended together. The red. We're going to do the sausage and roasted pepper pizza. But I'm also trying to, since I also have another client, vegan wines. I'm trying to be more and more and more open to, and uh, what am I trying to say? More open to and more creative with vegetarian and vegan options. So in order to pair with the red wine, something that is vegan, I'm gonna do uh, some roasted mushrooms. And I have here my roasted mushrooms. Uh, my mushrooms are brushed off and I always separate my caps and my stems because I use stems for um, stalks and soups and I use the caps for eating. So I have that sitting here with a little shallot that I'm gonna chomp, chomp up. Hello, Jay, hello, Diane, hello, Sale, who all is here today? Hello, guys, so that's my two, so the sausage and the mushrooms are gonna be the two pizzas that are gonna be for the red wine course. So that said, let's start getting some stuff in the oven. It's so hot in here already, I can't even tell you. I put it off, so I've already, as I said, I've already fired, I already charred these all around. And then I just want these to get super, super soft. So that's why I'm putting those in the oven. I also, you know, I always have roasted garlic and roasted garlic I'm gonna use in the preparation of the second course. Cause like I said, we're going backwards, but we're gonna get there in just a minute. I also have realized I've not been drinking enough water. So I'm trying to drink more water today. You know, normally I would carry a bottle with me to the gym in the morning. I would carry a bottle around with me when I called on clients. And I would be aware of not drinking water because I come home and realize I had still a heavy bag. 
I don't have that heavy bag to warm me anymore. So um, the garlic, I've just cut the tops of them off and I've covered the skins with olive oil, a pinch of salt, a pinch of pepper, a couple of cranks of pepper, and I am, this doesn't need this. This just needs to be sealed up this way. Here we go. Just pinch that close nice and tight. So now that's ready to go in the oven. And then we are gonna go to the second course. Why don't I go ahead and get those things in the oven so I have some more room to work with. I think that's a great idea. One and two. Perfect. Now, that's done. I have the window open. I have the front door propped open because I have no fan in here, as you see, so I have nothing to take all of this hot air that roils out of the back of here. So when it's 450 degrees in my oven, it's about 450 degrees right here. So now we're backing up. Those are the thing. everything is, we're gonna get this sausage on the stove here in a minute and crumbled up and, and flavored appropriately. But first I've gotta clear a few more things off. We're working backwards. So then the second wine that we're doing tonight is Viognier. Viognier is a grape that is indigenous to, again, the Mediterranean portion of France. If you don't know much about wine, the grapes that you know the names of, 80% of them are French. They're genetically French. They sprung up in France. We love them because of France, and that's why France is the most important place in the wine world. So Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, Petit Syrah, Syrah, uh, 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 Sauvignon Blanc, all of these grapes that roll off your tongue, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Riesling, these are all grapes that sprung up in that place that we call Gaul. Now we also have to remember that historically, here, I don't know which way, which way you guys see anymore, but that Germany, where we talk about Alsace and the Mosul, share a, 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 about, a, a, they're very close to one another is what I'm trying to say. And if you've ever been to an Alsace tasting, you walk down the aisle and you look at this family, and you go, oh look, this is a nice French family making wine in France. And then you step the next table and you go, and this is clearly a German family <laughs> making wine in Alsace because again, Alsace and Lorraine have switched three or four times in the last four or 500 years between France and, 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 and Germany. Uh, I went all, I went down uh, I went down a wine rabbit hole and got away from my food. So anyway, Viognier. When we first brought the Wines of Babylon store into New York, one of the first events that I did to launch them was I invited six maybe of my favorite sommeliers, people who I respected the, them, and we took an overnight out to Montauk and had a six-course meal and a ton of fun, and the chef there... I think we were at Gray Lady. It, maybe it was. It became Gray Lady. Anyway, we were in that space in Montauk, and they did all of these different courses. We sent the wines out to the chef ahead of time, so he had the opportunity to make perfect dishes. And he paired the Viognier with a yellow vegetable curry, and it was everybody's favorite, off the chart, amazing pairing of the whole the whole weekend. We loved it so much. And um, so anyway, that is why I am making. Indian pizza for that course. So I happen to have some naan because Honey Pie, Big Daddy, whatever you want to call him, sent me Indian food last night. So I could use that naan and the leftover chicken sog. And here's something I'm doing. So paneer, which is the farmer's cheese that is common to our friends in, in India, wasn't available. So I read and learned that by draining uh, ricotta, you get a passable substitute for paneer. And now I have some ricotta so I can make maybe a vegetable lasagna or something in the next couple of days. Yet another thing I got set up and ready to go today. Let me, my silicone wants to stick to each other. Thank you, Kelly, for these, by the way. Hello, Mara. Hello, Peggy. And let's see. You know what? I will post a picture, Katie, if you would like. And as a matter of fact, I might see if people don't mind, we might just post the whole wine class tonight. Um, where am I? So anyway, we're doing Indian pizza. So like I said, one of them, the, the meat option is going to be, um, I had said, hold on, instead of making it hard for yourself, I was going to just, oh, no, wrong one. Sorry, sorry. I apologize for going missing, guys. 
but I'm coming right back. So I had suggested for people who wanted to cook along a side, just pull out a Trader Joe's. These things are amazing. If you don't, if you don't use them, you should. I always keep them in case of emergency because 20 minutes you get a hot meal. They're delicious. They're like less than 400 calories a piece. They're amazing. So what I was gonna do is just thaw out a chicken tikka and sort of shred the chicken and put that with my house-made paneer, then my mint chimichurri, uh, and I was gonna make a little, um, what am I trying to say? Make a little raita. But I have a little raita left from last night. I have my mint chimichurri. I have chicken sog that I think will go, right, go on nicely. And maybe I'll put just a little smear of my house-made paneer and a little mint chimichurri. I think that'll be a fantastic little pizza. But again, being sensitive to people who are trying to eat less meat, I'm also going to roast a little cauliflower and that could be your option if you'd rather do it without meat. Let me put this back in the fridge. In the freeze. So, oh, holy cow. I have such a tiny freezer. Anyway, so guys, uh, next, what else have I done this morning? So I got all of the chimichurri and all of the things that I'm going to use in nice little jars because one of the things that I think is important, whether you're doing, I mean, it's, it's exactly what I would have done for the event that I was scheduled to do tonight if we were still being in person. Um, I was, uh, had been scheduled since January. Um, to do a how to throw a derby party event. And I had done one in, in, in uh, January for them and they, it was a huge hit. So we had already put one on for t tonight. And um, so I would have done, I would have been here doing all these same kinds of things, but making derby kinds of foods. And I would have put them in all sorts of cute little jars. So that this way, when I go on camera tonight with my paying guests, I'm going to have the same kind of attention to detail that I would have if I were throwing a party and you were coming to my home or if I were coming to your place of business to throw an event for you. So those little things that I know. You know, everybody's got a different time frame right now, and not everybody's doing this as a business. But little things like picking a beautiful, a beautiful dish to put something in is so much. You know, you could your salad dressing tastes exactly the same if it's in a washed out gray poupon jar as it does if you put one in that you've taken the label off of. But the one that you've taken the label. Um, the one you've taken the label off of just looks a little nicer. And if you've got some little pretty thing that you can put it in, it's just that much nicer. And you know, it's why God made ramekins. They just make things look nicer. And we all have the time, I think, to make things look a little nicer. So anyway, that's my idea. And yes, Liesl, uh, if you don't know, uh, her family makes wines. Paul uh, Paul Kluver wines, they're amazing. They, they excel at everything, but they are particularly great with Pinot Noir there. Um, Babylon Storin is here. And again, I can't see what, I can't, for, I, can't rem I know that I, you see me differently than I see myself, so it's hard for me to do. Normally I'm like, this is a map of France. <laughs> um, but they're uh, a little further south and a little closer to the coast, so they get lots of cooling air that makes it possible for them to excel at that Pinot Noir, which really requires um, a, a little gentler climate. So um, then the grapes that are grown at Babylon Storin are hardier things because it can vary often in the growing season be 90 100 degrees at the peak of the day and 55 or 60 at night i can't tell you how many times i've been in south africa where it's 5 30 we all join to have like a braai and we're having drinks outside and by 6 or 6 30 people have started running back to their rooms to put on fleece and by seven o'clock people are running home to put on long pants and by eight o'clock they're getting scars in 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 the in the height of summer so it's again it's like the most amazing place in the world and i did a wine event there uh many several years ago and at the end of it I had served wine to probably 500 people over the course of four or five hours and I turned to my friend and I said there was not a homely person here you're the most beautiful people as a people I've ever seen regardless of your ethnicity they're all incredibly beautiful I said not one homely person and she said 
what does homely mean? And I thought, oh Lord, they don't even have a word for ugly in South Africa. So there you go. <laughs> so what's next, guys? So I've gotten my, help me remember, I've gotten my garlic and I've got my roasted peppers in a really screaming hot oven, 450 degrees. So um, I need to uh, work on my toppings for my babble things. Now the last is just gonna be, the first is gonna be paired with Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc is a grape that originates not in the south of France, but in the north of France. So if you can envision in your mind's eye where the Loire River runs south of Paris, then this is the part where we are is in the Loire River Valley. My personal, probably my favorite, region in general of France. That's not the kind of thing most people would say, but I think that Cabernet Franc is the most undersung grape in the world. It can be uh, so lean and minerally and a perfect pair for foods, but you can also, I've seen expressions of it where it's bright and beautiful in a, in an almost, a way almost reminiscent of Pinot Noir with bright fruits and then they're all high acid white wines, man, and they can make sweet wines and they can make sparkling wines and they can make dry wines. So I think the Loire, if I had to go and choose one place to drink wine the rest of my life, it'd probably be the Loire Valley. I get my sparklers, I get my dry whites, I get my sweet whites, and I get my excellent reds. What more could a girl ask for? Oh yeah, and they grow Pinot Noir too. And I get Chenin Blanc and Sauvignon Blanc. It's really the way to go. I'm so dying of thirst, I'm gonna to have to have a drink of food. By Christopher Simonson. Christopher Simonson was my number one singing buddy when we were growing up. We, you know, most kids today spend their weekends going off to uh, and doing uh, soccer and playing soccer and doing all these sports. Well, not us. We ran around all over the state and the tri-state and golly gee, I don't know where all, doing singing contests and not just like Taylor Swift, we were like, pulling out the Mozart and and the hard stuff. So, kudos. Mm -mm. I agree, Shannon is one of the most underrated grapes. Like Riesling, it is one of the few grapes that you can do anything you want to it. Even more so than Riesling, because I don't think Riesling reacts well to any, uh, any oak that's still giving anything other than oxygen, right? So, I think that you can oak Shannon, you can not oak Shannon. You, it really, you can do anything to it. It's amazing. Um, love it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, that was good. Where am I, guys? You guys might have to go home and do your own thing because I could be here all day. If somebody feels like I've been here too long, say, Alyssa, turn it off, right? All right, so let's do this. Let's get this little guy ready to go so he can go out of my way. Um, just, I don't know. I'm, I'm new to this vegetarian thing, so I'm just going to give that guy a little drizzle of olive oil. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Oh, you can. Excellent. And then I'm going to give him a little tiny bit of salt, right? Not too much because we're going to put a lot of flavor on this, and we'll figure it all out in the end. And so I've gotten out here. Hang on. Let me get my ungreasy my hands. I got a little cumin because why not? Just give it a little dash, a little paprika. That'll make it pretty and colorful for sure. And it's fresh. I just bought it the other day. So just let, I feel like, you know, use herbs and spices when you've got them and when they're nice and fresh. And then I've got this curry powder also. I'm going to give that a little dash. Let's go on to the underside and give it a little bit of flavor. Oh, Lord, this is not working for me because I haven't taken all the paper off. So I'm gonna have to Rachel Ray this now and just give it a little, there we go. Perfect. Mm. Oh, so good. So, so, so good. Now with this, guys, I happen to have curry powder. You might have, you know, a tikka or a garam masala, but anything that falls in that, uh, that sort of Indian or even North African uh, spice palette is gonna be just fine for uh, uh, pairing with the Viognier is what I'm trying to say. So now I'm gonna put that here. And I'm probably just gonna set this aside because I don't wanna overfill my, my, uh, my stove. And I'll swap this out for um, 
this. So um, Italian sausage, sausage, I don't know what your situation is where you live, but where I live, you can't get breakfast sausage and anything but links. I, the, the idea of buying a pound of sausage the way it came when I was growing up is evidently foreign to northerners. So I can't get those kinds of things and I've learned to, pardon me while I move things around a little bit, I have learned how to make do with things like taking this, the casings off of Italian sausage because I could do this in slices but I'm going to enjoy this more if I get it into a super fine crumble to go onto my pizza tonight, right? Um, I don't know if I'm making too much or too little, but I'm hoping, my idea is that for most of these things, um, I'm going to be doing another identical uh, online tasting with a private group on Sunday. So I'm hoping that most of this stuff, so like I did set up two... Uh, jars of tomato and that kind of thing so that I'm already practically ready to go for Sunday. Um, that's one of the great things about designing events that are replicable, right? <laughs> you can do them if you get lucky enough to do them in uh, two or three in a week or two, then you've got the time to, uh, then you, you don't have to spend so much time. It's not four hours every day, you might put in four hours the first day, and then you're gonna be able to get it done. Pardon me, renegade sausage. Uh, and then you just don't have to put in as much time, right? Uh, the next days, because almost everything else is all jarred and ready to go. So, Jay is off, to, off for, to get her ingredients for tonight. Uh, for what, do I need a timer for what's in the oven? You know what, say, 30 minutes would be good for me, but y'all might be gone by 30 minutes. You might be tired of me by then. But anyway, yeah, I'm thinking these, we're roasting things, and you can't really over roast garlic, right? As long as it's not hot enough, as long as your oven isn't so hot that it's gonna actually burn things, you can kind of keep it there for a while. So thank you for that, I appreciate that. Let's see what else is going on here. And yes, Late Harvest Shannon is fantastic. And what else is going on? Uh, 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 da, 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 da. Just checking in, hello Leah, and hello Vander. So guys, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this up and hot. Come on, baby. So that's gonna be ready to take my sausage, and I'm just gonna try to fry it up so that I get little pieces. Does anybody remember Sir Pizza, where the sausage was like literally like rabbit food pellets? I loved that. So now while we're waiting for that to come up, I can go ahead here, and I've got my, my honey bought me a grater grater ready to go, fancy with the box attached. So all I have to do is just grate my palm and I'm being lazy and I'm not doing it on the teeny tiny side. I'm doing it on the bigger side because who cares, right? Good palm is for flavor. And I don't think I'm gonna need a whole lot more than that because I'm not using it a lot. And I'm gonna put that aside. So bada bang, we got that done. Candy top. I love it. Put that aside. Now, is this hot yet? Not quite. I almost grated my finger off. That's a very Alyssa thing to do. All right, so I'm going to take this, pop this over here, clean my fingers. Yeah, it's been a long time since you've thought about Sir Pizza, hasn't it? Uh, uh, Hugo called me last night and said that he was driving to go get what are those things? White Castle. Now, something y'all may or may not know, it depends on how long you've known me or how many of these you've been listening to, but I haven't had any commercial fast food 30 years, June the 1st. I moved to New York 30 years ago. I left Lexington at uh, on May 31st. I have no idea why we took two nights to drive in, but we did. And Lexington people in the uh, antiques business might know Ron Meese, who's from Casey County originally, and he rode up with me. God bless him. And we came right up here up the road and picked up Hail Pettit. But as we were coming across, anybody who's driven on the uh, uh, 
uh, I-95 coming up the coast, you know that McDonald's kind of owns the food options. And so uh, we stopped and I got a Happy Meal, as I always did. And I looked at Ronnie and I said, you know what? I am moving to what is arguably the best food city in the world. I'm never eating this again. And I haven't. I have had, there was a terrible, terrible problem one night with my flight getting canceled because of ice. And I went to the James Beard house with my friend Meredith and Abe Shoner and Stacy Iser, it was her her uh, dinner, and I went out with all the chefs after dinner until 4 a.m. If you know Abe Shoner, you know that he is not afraid of alcohol in his wine, so there was that. And then we ended up at WXOU Radio Bar, where they have nothing but booze until about four in the morning, and then I got on an airplane. And when I got home to Lexington, Jamie Baker picked me up, and I said, what's for dinner? First words out of my mouth, that's unheard of. And when he told me, I said, you need to take me for French fries right now. And so he took me to the Sonic on Winchester Road, and I had French fries, because that's how ill I was for my very, very long night. So anyway, there's that story. And uh, so other than the Sonic French fries, I am confident that uh, other than the fact that my parents stop at Domino's every Sunday night and a couple pieces of Domino's pizza, no fast food for me. Um, and I realized the other day that since I've stopped eating out, that even little snacky things that I have around the house don't taste good to me anymore. And let's get this off the heat. So, as you see what I did, I just took two flat end spoon, uh, spoons and just made sure that my sausage cooked up into little small pieces and then I can just take that flat edge and run it through any piece that seems too big and I can also just let that sit there and sizzle for a little while. I didn't put anything on this except a little salt here, so why don't we probably pretty flavorful anyway, but I'm going to give it a little bit of black pepper and a little bit, let's find the crushed red pepper. I'm going to be happier with that than the cayenne. My dad is a crazy man, and because I guess as he approaches 80, he has lost some of his taste buds. He will literally take the cayenne pepper and cover your slice of pizza in it and hand it to you. My mom is sometimes like, uh, Dickie, not everybody likes their pizza like that. And if you know my father, you can hear him saying, ah, it'll be okay. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. So my sausage is over here, and I'm, I've got that going. Are you guys tired of this yet? Have I been on here for three hours? Oh, by the way, first of all, I have to start where things need to start. That wants to come off, so we don't want that to happen. So a few months ago my dear sweet sweet friend kelly who is my probably my favorite house guest bought me this lovely little oven mitt which is so adorable it says my favorite salad is wine and that's true my favorite salad is wine so imagine my surprise when yesterday my doorman tells me i have a package that i'm not expecting and i find that my dear dear friend denise has sent me one from the same collection that says Hellraiser. So two people who know me very, very well have gotten me identical, almost identical and perfect gifts. So thank you guys, I appreciate it so much. Also in Denise's was this, I like long romantic walks to the fridge. I think that, I think that describes all of our lives right now, right? So let's see guys, this is coming, becoming quiet. I am going to now take a second to uh, do something I had set up a few minutes ago before we got started and then I didn't have any room on the oven. Another thing I do anytime I clean out my fridge or have a big event, if I'm getting started with a big, setting up a big event or breaking down a big event, I put a full teapot on the stove. And I'm going to bring that up to a boil. Uh, up to a whistle. Come on, baby. There we go. 
If you live in New York, um, uh, what do you call those? In, in sinker writers are illegal. So there's no grinding up the stuff that goes down your sink. You know, the grease, the oil, blah, blah, blah. I live in a 90 something year old building. So to do my part to kind of help keep things not exploding and ruining my beautiful kitchen, I try to pour a whole pot of boiling water down the sink two or three or four or five or six times a month, depending on how much I'm cooking. And you know how much I'm cooking these days. So next, now I've got to sort of do some cleaning up here. Um, so yeah, garbage disposal, that's the word. See, I haven't had one, so I don't know what you even call them. Hello, John. John, I'm playing um, the, uh, the Hillary Hahn that you posted uh, on, the, on the Metamorphosis site behind me. It's beautiful. Um, where are we guys? Let's see, I can put this, I can put these little bits and pieces of things away and make myself some more space here. Oh my, so many things. Here we go. I also solved my roasted tomato problem this morning. I found a nice box of really, really good looking sun-dried tomatoes and I've simply put them into a jar with a ton of olive oil. Now I have what I want whenever I want it. I'm very happy about that. So let me see if I can get this cleaned up real fast. Hello, Sheila, how are you? There we go. Hello, Rennie, how are you, Rennie? I missed you. I overslept this morning. I like literally didn't open my eyes until the alarm clock went off at nine. I like, don't know who I am. But I was very fitful last night and didn't have a nice night's sleep. And it didn't seem, it, when I woke up, I opened my eyes and I thought, this can't be. It looks like it's six outside. But it's just a crappy day in New York. So uh, here we go. I'm getting these things cleaned up. I like to get meat mess cleaned up pretty quickly if I can. It might just be a little obsessive compulsive on my part, but what have I got to do except feed my obsessive compulsive these days, right? All right, now, cleaned up. <coughs> Pardon me. Hello, Fred, how are you? Hello, Ramona. Ah. Here we go. Yeah, the hot water is a great idea, especially if you live in an old building, an old house. You know, you don't, <coughs> pardon me. I think it started bumming me out when I <clears throat> read about the fatbergs that are that are forming and that, you know, we're all washing fat and lots of people now are cleaning their bongs and putting that down the sink. And, you know, this is just nothing but a whole bunch of oily, messy nastiness that gets together in our water systems and ew, I don't like that. So what's next for me? I got to deal with my shroomies over here. So let's do that. Um, I could really use something to put this pretty, to put that sausage in, but I don't have it handy right here without having to move lighting fixtures and things. So I am going to take this, pardon me, too many years working in the restaurant business, I say excuse me and pardon me to myself in the kitchen when I step out of line. So that's another crazy thing, right? Mm. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a scrub here because that's just enough to get my remaining red pepper flakes out of here because I'm just going to take this same pan and cook my shrooms in this. So, there we go. We'll give that in just a second. We'll give that a, we'll put some heat under there. So you may hear the crazy wind outside. It's insane here today. Mm. Mm. Southern ladies under tremendous stress. I will say that I have noticed that my mood has changed since there's been a consistent drop in the number of deaths and hospitalizations in my actual town. I know that that is not the case for all of you out there. Some of you are still in a rise, rising phase and you may have a crazy governor who's telling you just go out and breathe and lick on each other. Um, as I've said over and over again, 
if I can monetize this, I'll stay here forever. I'll have Dr. Fauci over for dinner. I could do this the rest of my life, y'all. So, as long as I could occasionally have a guest. Like, you know, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, when Vicki was here and she was basically the sideline producer from the other from the other room, I really, I could do this the rest of my life. It's like doing a play every day. So, let's see. Let's slice up some of these bad boys. <laughs> So here we go. So I'm, Jamie Baker just sent me a quote on text telling me something that Governor Murphy, um, and who is our friend to the north, and there we go. So I'm just giving these a good slicing because they're going to roast up of, uh, on the oven on the in this skillet here, and they are going to shrink up and brown up, and now. There are lots of other things. I thought along, long and hard this morning about making them Duxelle. You know, little tiny, tiny little little uh, squares. But that takes a lot more cutting. And after the whole story about the guy who, Hugo's family friend, who cut his finger off working on the birdhouse, I'm eliminating lots of fancy knife work. <laughs> I, I would be happy, I would not be happy about having a finger that couldn't get attached reattached, but my friend Meredith, chef extraordinaire, uh, explained to me that above the first knuckle, your finger will grow back. So now I have not been able to verify that. My medical school training did not cover appendages that grow back, but I like that idea. So, so I'm making a lot of these because I love mushrooms so much that if I'm going to get a pan, a pan going for mushrooms, they will never go to waste. I'll, I'll have them for breakfast. I'll have eggs and, and mushrooms tomorrow if that's what it comes to. So, and I'm happy to roast more mushrooms for Sunday. So there are those all ready to go. Now I am doing this pizza with slices of, I've done half moons of Bermuda onion because that is a nod to one of my favorite pizzas in New York, which is Waldi's. Um, and what he does such cute and clever toppings on all of his pizzas and uh, and yeah so here we go guys I'm cleaning this off Oop, garbage so I have another problem that I that I hope well I've come up with a temporary fix I've never bought a garbage bag in my life I um, have used uh, kitchen, I don't know what I'm trying to say, is uh, shopping bags that we get at the, you know, the plastic bags we get at the supermarket. Well, you know, they've stopped that. We don't have plastic bags at the supermarket in New York anymore. And so I now no longer have anything to put garbage in. Now you may say, Alyssa, Hefty makes garbage bags. I may have to take you and show you, you know, that I have this tiny kitchen. I have only one bit of floor space and that is the bag where I put all my recyclables. Here is where I keep my grocery bag. It hangs off of those, did everybody see that? It hangs off those two little hooks that were put there by Kelly Fitzgerald Burns when she lived here 26 years ago, and I have continued to use that. So now I finally hit send on the Amazon that I've been collecting off and on over the last few weeks. And in that is a package of purple t-shirt bags. So I at least will have 50 more or 100 more, however many I ordered. But I don't know, I have no other solution. And you can't buy those at the, gar at, the, at, the, at the grocery store. AJ, I have everything going for tonight. We've got sausage, I'm about to make mushrooms. I've got um, cauliflower ready to, to roast. It's gonna be so much fun. So guys, so I'm just gonna say to you that I am available to do this for your friends, your clients. We can taste wine. I have the ability to ship wine anywhere except people who live in a dry community. I cannot ship to dry communities, but as I did the work around today, my parents live next door to a dry community and they will Put, the, put your wine in their driveway for you. 
my water's coming up to boil, I am going to put just a tiny spot of oil here in my uh, skillet. And I'm going to spread that around a lot because it's with my mushrooms. I don't want them to cook or fry. I just want them to kind of oven, you know, stove top roast. So let's get some heat going under here. Oh, guys, have I been here for too long today? So anyway, um, here we go. I'm about close to my bowl, my bowl and water, as they say. Let me get things out of the sink so that that's ready to roll. See how this is getting hot? Mm -hmm. Coming close, it's gonna be a while. So anyway, that's all I know, guys. I don't, I'm really just gonna sit here until I finish up these last few things. Uh, those mushrooms are gonna cook up, they, you know, they're kind of like a, a roasting, or what am I trying to say? Onions, getting onions. <laughs> ah, getting onions to caramelize. You've got to be patient with that. So there's my boiling water right down my sink. Keep my sink clean and moving fast, especially when I have no dishwasher. So that's everything goes right down that sink, right? Every bit of crazy waste in my house. This is coming up. I'm gonna throw some of these, just a few shallots to flavor it up in here a little bit. But like I said, not a lot because I'm putting Bermuda onion slices, half rings on the pizza itself. Where are we? Mm. Let that come. As you know, I've done uh, mushrooms here before. I, we don't salt them because you want them to give up their water on their own. Salting is something you can do at the very, very end for flavoring or add your, add your flavoring in different ways. However, a little all in all, never hurt anybody, nor did a little time. So let's get this going. So I'm just going to take off a few pieces of time here. And then, since I happen to have the twine so handily here, do not forget to tie up your time because, boy, it sucks trying to get all the little stems out when you forget to tie up your time. Here we go. Guys, you would think that I'd never done this before. Sometimes I think I've gotten so old I can't see, and I only imagine that I see things. But there we go. And it's a shame because I feel so young. <sighs> I just can't see. That's the only problem. So that's it. that's about it, guys. I don't think I really have much else to do except put the cauliflower in when I pull the other things out and clean up so that everything is pretty when we get in here tonight. I am gonna bring in a second, I'm gonna bring in a little table, take out my recycling and bring in a little table because I'm gonna try working with two cameras. I'm gonna log into Zoom on at least two, maybe even three devices, you never know, to see what happens there. So I'll report back. And remember, if anybody is looking for something to do while we're still in lockdown, Give me a call. So that's all, you guys. That's it for today. I've got to finish this stuff up. And um, does it make my mushrooms no longer um, vegetarian when I start using the same things that I was cooking uh, using in the sausage? Probably. But look how nicely those are really, they're giving up their water. They're browning up beautifully. Let me make sure I got my heat back down. Voila, guys. So that's how I get ready for an event. And tomorrow, 
Um, I'll probably have a few other little things out, but maybe before I go live tonight, I'll show you how I've got the kitchen set up and how I have things ready to come in and come out um, so that you can keep it rolling. That's always when I first started doing wine events for Bottle Rocket back in 2006. Um, they would literally have somebody walk by with a sign going, Alyssa, you have 15 minutes left. And then I would be like, guys, 15 minutes is not enough. I need a 30 minute, I need a 15 minute, and I need a get up and walk out the door kind of. So, because I would, as you can see, would talk all day long. And so if it's wine, you can only imagine, I actually know something about wine. All I know about food is that we have to eat every day. So that's all you guys. I love you so much for coming by. You inspire me. You you, you give me a route and a, and a, to my day. And I can't, I don't have words to express how meaningful it is to me that you guys are all willing to come and give me a part of your day, especially when we're all here looking for meaning. So uh, it's the most valuable, it's the most valuable thing you can give anybody is your time and your attention and that becomes affection. So I thank you so much for it all. Um, I'm going to say goodbye so that I can get all this cleaned up and look and see. Yeah, because I've only got about 40 minutes before I have to teach my niece and nephew's class. And then I have a call, and then I have to do this. So my day is already gone right in front of me. See you, cuz. See you, friends. See you, everybody. I love you so much. And you know the drill. Do something good for yourselves. Take care of your body. Take care of your mind. Take care of your heart. And then go see if you can find something good to do for somebody else. I love you all. Ciao.